हेलो प्लीज आवाज आ रही है यस सर हेलो आवाज आ रही है यस सर हाँ हेलो आवाज आ रही है यस सर हाँ Now, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I would like to continue the autopsy. Uh, if you remember that last time, I have discussed the examination of the dead body because how we are going to conducting the autopsy and the procedure of autopsy was divided into external examination as well as the internal examination. And last time, I have recorded my lecture on the external examination of the dead body I have to deliver the class and this is usually the other day me last time and we are like to discuss the internal examination of dead body. Now, if you remember that uh, um, I say just a minute that the examination of autopsy is divided into two steps, external as well as the internal. This internal examination is more more um, the dead body. How you are going to cutting the dead body? What technique is needed and what are the objectives to do the internal examination? That's why, from this point of view, uh, very important internal examination. And technically, we have to do the body all three feet can be open opened one by one. And internal examination, first of all, I would like to. And discuss on the objectives of internal examination. Why we are doing it? Yes, sir. Hello. Because I talk about this autopsy is a dialect between dead body and autopsy. Dialect because the the autopsy surgeon sometimes ask a certain question from the dead body that I want to hear how much time you have to die away, how you die away, why you die away, which are all included in the objectives of medical literature. But when I discuss the objectives of internal examination, this is another thing that why we are doing the internal examination because the internal examination is very important and one of the most important objectives of internal uh, object of internal examination is to, to see the effect of the external trauma to inside. When you are cutting the dead body and you are looking inside the body, I mean that when you are opening the uh, three cavities, you are looking the Effect of external trauma with the internal findings. So this is one of the important things because externally, when we do external examination and external examination, we only see the mark of violence or type of injury on the body. But when we cut the dead body, we see the effect of external trauma to the internal findings. Number second object of internal examination is that you see sometime a person receive a very severe injury. And one of the significant injury is sufficient to cause death of injury. Suppose a person has got a trauma over head area, he has got intracranial hemorrhage. Suppose he has got stabbing on the abdominal area, stabbing in chest area. So we are looking for externally. The second object is that uh, the external significant injury is sufficient to cause death in the ordinary course of life. We are that's why we are opening the internal cavities to see. Suppose a person has got a trauma, we see it, uh, inside the cranial cavity, we see the thoracic, we see the abdominal cavity, that external trauma, significant one which caused the death of the individual. Now, the third uh, object for the internal examination is the recovery of the biological material because in, in external examination, when in externally we call only examining, but we cannot recover the 
biological material as well as the concerned individual viscerals for detailed examination to the histopathology as well as to the chemical examiner. So third objective is, is to be conducted down for the preservation and taking out of the viscerals from the dead body and preservation of the biological material. Number fourth object for internal examination is that to see the heart tissue, to see any bony injury, to find out any foreign body inside the body. For example, if the bullet is inside the body, if is there any fracture in the body, so we can externally, we cannot trivialize except the radiological uh, help. But when we, we confirm this injury that this person has got fracture, of skull fracture of tibia, fracture of skull or fracture of the femur or otherwise. So we can dissect the dead body and technically examine the picture of a heart tissue as well as the location of the foreign body inside the body. When it, the person has got only wound of entry and wound of exit is missing, bullet is inside the body. So that's why these are the four objectives by for which we are doing the internal exam. Now, number the second point is we see in the slide is a technique. Now, there are thinking of certain is entirely different. The technique of doing the internal examination of dead body is entirely different. The suggestion of intern, internal examination by various uh, authors as well as the various scientists is uh, different. That how you can examine all three serious cavities, is what are the method and maneuver. So first of all, there are certain techniques. Number one is the, you see, on it one is the work code technique. <laughs> <laughs> And then we can for any injury, for any uh, injury or otherwise, and if you are taking the heart from thoracic safety, should be separately placed in the container and examined in detail. So, the code technique is suggests uh, says that this is the individual examination of the organ one by one from every thoracic cavity from top to toe to examine, to locate, to see, to confirm the any obvious uh, findings or pathology involved in case of the, 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 the organ or injury. This technique is to examine organ one by one to uh, conclude, conclude the opinion after examining the various organs. Number six, the Rico tank is, this is the another technical method and his technique is that this technique is only adopted in the infectious uh, diseases or the person who are brought to hospital and decomposed by the especially cases of AIDS or especially cases Sir? of HIV infection or other viral infection where it is quite uh, difficult to remove the organ like in the Rico technique individually from the body to examine leading to spreading of the infection. So Rico technique says that it down to remove the organ from the body but we examine the organs one by one uh, as I say in Virco technique, that examination of the organs inside the in Virco, it is outside the body. But they say you know, when you open the skull, you examine the brain inside. That is called as the insight examination, in situ examination, in situ. You examine the brain down to remove from the cavity. You examine the lungs and thoracic cavity, as well as the heart and thoracic cavity. Uh, the internal intestine as well as the stomach, liver, and all uh, the abdominal organs should be examined in, in inside the abdominal cavity. Don't remove because leading to spreading of infection, especially the chances in case of HIV or especially in case of the AIDS uh, patient. What is the uh, what is the uh, Gons uh, uh, technique? Gons technique is entirely different. He says that uh, 
you can do to examine once you are opening the uh, uh, cranial cavity then it is better to examine according to system wise of the body when you examining central nervous system it means you open the skull along with the spinal cord and you can do the laminectomy and the spinal cord should be examined so the examined along medulla oblongata uh, should be examined thoroughly collectively so his approach bone approach is, is that in spite of doing here and there you go to dissect the dead body according to the system now for example if you are examining the central nervous system then you examine the brain then you open the spinal cord and you see the medulla oblongata to any obvious injury or any other pathology he says that if when you are examining the heart then you dis- examine the cardiovascular system it means you examine the heart as well as the coronaries in, including all the vessels blood supply to the heart it so he say when you examine the cardiovascular system heart with the coronaries should be examined thoroughly and completely he says when you examine the respiratory system then you start examining from the trachea then you come in the lungs and you see the entire so respiratory system cardiovascular system and the 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 central system should be examined organs uh, concerned with all the system should be thoroughly examined one by one but it should be systematically when you open the abdominal cavity they say we start examining from the stomach then you go in intestine then you can go all the organs so in, in, in including inside the abdominal cavity when you examining the renal system then you examining the uh, kidneys as well as the blood supply of the vessel supply renal vessels as well as the system and uh, urinary bladder as well as the ureter should be examined so approach of the bones is entirely different he say in spite of uh, examining the organ individually or in examining the dead body when you are dissecting the body systematically central system then cardiovascular system then respiratory system then gi system should be examined so as to conclude the cause of death lutai lutai is an technique rapid technique in other uh, latest technique for examining the dead body internally it is a rapid technique that they say that uh, in spreading of the spreading the time it is better to thoroughly examining the whole organs you remove first of all all organs should be removed in one stroke in one uh, one stroke from all serious cavities uh, collectively less in the teacher and then the you remove all organs not one by one at a time from all serious cavities once then you can place in the container then you can examine the collective all the organs one by one these are all very technical now then it comes to the type of incision how will you dissect the dead body what type of the incision is given on the dead body obviously there are three types of incision given on dead body when you are cutting the dead body the incision over the dead bodies are classified primary incision second incision and tertiary incision now primary incision when we are going to taking the incisions by scalpel surgical scalpel when you are cutting the skin so primary incision is always used for cutting only the skin when the when the incision is given on the tenacious muscles we call it as the secondary incisions when the incision are given on the joints and tendons we call it as the tertiary incision so is the incision primary always given on the skin secondary incision is are to cutting of the muscles and uh, uh, soft tissue tertiary again given on joints controversial incision joints and tendons is given the tertiary now let us see to how first of all we are going to now opening the dead body now first of all we are starting from top to toe so first of our incision part is called we are going, going to open the skull on a top step this is very important question you will ask a question in the viva how will you open the skull on a top step table so the answer for skull or incision for open the cranial cavity is that first of all you can see in this picture the body is laid down on the autopsy table and you can slightly raise the head of the patient put in a posterior to be the base hoy yani ana ko ma do is to slightly because if you does not lock the mind just yeah you cannot tension not kaya wala chitta bada hi sir 
so that's why sela it is method that either a wooden block or either iron block should be given posteriorly to raise the uh, up rid of the in, uh, dead body slightly upward in a uh, in one line so after putting this uh, this uh, block over the body that the method is that next year the 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 method of examination is that opening the skull is that you see in this picture so you take the is called thought giving the incision this time now the the precaution is that we have to remove the hairs of the dead body so sometimes when you start shaving the dead body hair of the or you can remove all the hair then you can use the start the incision on this gram mesh type the mesh type then when you hand it over the dead body the person will start right crying and shouting because you cannot uh, know about that how how incision you have given so it is better that incision should be given to hairs as you see in this picture so you, this is the incision is given from mastite is behind the ear, ear and it should be the, the transfer incision from mastite to mastite this is just transfer incision from one to in a uh, another mastite area and you can reflect the flap of the uh, uh, scalp you see in this picture so lightly make the angle at this area so when you have to cut the scalp uh, uh, all the fibers of the scalp is going to cut yeah we don't need you need to work on your body from next time about the area of the chip kar jao mujhe leni hi bas okay pass let me to yaad de hoti hai चलो चलो नहीं 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 मुझे नहीं पता मैं 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 should be removed up to the anterior axillary fold this is a supra axillary and posterior portion this flap should be reflected down posteriorly up to the occipital protuberance so this is the reflection of the cutting of the scalp in two way to from mastoid to mastoid and anterior portion brought up to supra axillary posterior up to the occipital region then you uh, skull is opened that is vertex is to be realize first of all you can examine the skull you see any obvious uh, finding any of site finding of injury you see this is the sub scale per hematoma it means uh, application of force was external you see this dot or this is spot suggest of external trauma was applied on skull so it leads sub scale per hemorrhage similarly you see behind this is the spots of the bleeding Now it suggested that the person has sustained the injury on head area. So you see externally the vertex of the skull to see any presence or possibility of the injury. Then after this one, you can take a saw. When you have to reflect these uh, flap up to interior ridges and posteriorly after confirmation of examination thoroughly. of skull keep externally for any injury any fracture any depressed fracture any sub scale per hematoma then you can open the skull keep now the method of skull uh, opening of skull keep is usually used by electrical saw and if you remember i showed last time the electrical saw electrical saw should be put very carefully from from this area and you can rotate the skull uh, that is the electrical saw in a rounded manner that is the circular incision should be given in a circular way uh, thoroughly and gently gently to open the skull cap now if we we use manual skull cap then we can do some blenders we can do some artifacts so it's better nowadays 
you can thoroughly and carefully use electrical saw to open the skull cap very thoroughly. So slightly, gently, circular incision is to be given across this area to open the skull cap. Now, after you have the skull cap, when you use a skull cap, uh, that is the electric, electrical saw, skull cap will be in your hand. And you see in this slice, the skull cap is removed thoroughly, very gently, within a second, the skull cap is in your hands. Now then you see ex uh, internally, after previously you have to examine externally, then first of all, after opening the skull cap, you see inside the, uh, the that is the inner table of the skull, is there any bleeding, is there any possibility of fracture, is there any finding in the inner table of the skull, skull uh, vertex, that is the skull cap, the noted should be, it should be noted down inside the your book. Then after confirming any bleeding, any trauma, any findings, any fracture in the inside of the inner table, then you search over on the dura. The next layer of the brain is the dura mater. First of all, you look for any extra dural hemorrhage. Suppose a person has got trauma from this area, must have got collection of the gush of the blood over the meninges. So if there is any meninges is present, now you see here that uh, the what is the how the how the dura is to be cut down in the autopsy. Now you you are um, I th I'm sure that you have to understand that how we remove the skull cape. Now then next layer is the dura mater. And uh, now the dura of external, extra dural, extra cranial hemorrhages, extra dural hematoma, and uh, any hemorrhages over the dura should be noted down if present. If they're not present, then you are start cutting the dura by scissor. There are two methods by cutting the uh, dura meter. One is the circular method. You start cutting the dura meter circularly across the uh, brain uh, round, in a rounded manner slightly and gently so as to not damage the brain matter. Number second is that method is that either you are cutting the dura in a circular manner to separate the dura from the brain matter. Second thing is that if you feel difficulty, then you can longitudinally cut the dura from this end anteriorly to posteriorly or posterior to anteriorly. So cut the dura into two layers, one layer on this side and one layer on this side. In this slide, this is the circular cutting of the dura to separate the brain brain matter. Now look here the brain matter after separating the dura meter. The second thing is then you will see, see the subdural hematoma because extra dural were not present. Then you look for any bleeding under the surface of the dura was present or not. Any injury to the dura were present, any cutting tearing of the dura or not. If you are sure that there is no any extra cranial uh, extra dural, uh, uh, intra dural uh, hemorrhage, then you can go on the brain cavity. You look at the brain matter, look externally any injury uh, to the brain matter uh, and note it down any injury, any bruise, any contusion over the brain, any subdural hem hematoma, subarcanide hemorrhages should be noted down in the brain matter. After you confirm that there is no any injury on the brain area, is no any finding on the brain area, then you take the scissor and you cut the fox cerebri in between. You cut both hemisphere, separated the both hemisphere left and right by going through cutting the fox, fox cerebri in lung fashion. And after cutting, then uh, you can insert your left hand in posterior cranial fossa, or you can use from anterior cranial fossa. You use your left hand to insert in the anterior cranial fossa and go up to the middle cranial fossa and slightly to raise the brain upward to locate the pituitary stalk. Now then when you pituitary, you reach the pituitary stalk, slightly raise the brain upward with your left hand and by the help of Caesar, you cut the, uh, the uh, pituitary stalk and remove the brain to place down the brain inside the container. This is the procedure how you are removing the brain from the brain cavity. What, what, what else you are doing now? In fresh cases, we are sending the brain for two purposes. The piece of the brain should be taken uh, for sending the histopathological examination and some piece of the brain should be 
taken to be sent for the chemical examiner for evaluated any possibility of poisoning. But if, but in the decomposed body brought to you, you could not be look for uh, identify the brain matter in this way. आवाज आ रही है बेटा हेलो आवाज आ रही है हेलो आवाज आ रही है यस सर यस सर यस सर दी सेम पॉइंट दैट हाउ वी आर सेंडिंग द ब्रेन फॉर आफ्टर रिमूविंग द ब्रेन फ्रॉम क्रेनल कैविटी नाउ आई टॉक अबाउट द टू पॉसिबिलिटीज इन फ्रेश डेड बॉडीज the brain matter is will be divided some portion of brain matter will be sent for histopathological examination after complete preservation in 10% formalin and for the chemical examiner we are uh, preserving the brain in a normal saline tent that is 0.9% so saturated solution of salt and the case sent for chemical examiner but i say here that suppose you use uh, for histopathological examination best method is that you can freeze the brain after freezing the brain now when brain is freezed then you uh, cut across the brain by making the multiple slices now cutting slices brain after freezing the brain matter in a defreezing system then you start cutting the brain in multiple slightly slides slices and slices should be examined under microscope for any obvious uh, possible pathological lesion seen inside the brain suppose you have got no any proper arrangement for defreezing that it is better to harden the brain in 10% formalin and when the brain is hardened now it is fixed down now then you start cutting the brain multiple slides and send for the histopathological or microscope examination but in decomposed dead body when we are doing the autopsy in a decomposed dead body obviously the brain matter cannot be seen in light it will be at, at, uh, it will be putrefied and watery or the decomposed brain matter will be identified so it is a, a use a futile so sometime we can take the liquid matter in a decomposed dead body and is preserved in the container and only sending for the chemical examiner because all the histopathological findings will be obliterated in decomposition so only brain matter when we uh, we receive the de decomposed dead body while liquid brain matter is to be identified from cranial cavity should be sent for chemical examiner for any possibility of the the uh, that particular poisoning now then after opening the cranial cavity then next stage that how you are opening the incision for neck area now uh, neck area can be opened by two way one is the straight eye incision you started from chin you see in this slide this taken in uh, scalper you see incision from chin area and up up to the surprise that in the notch and uh, the skin is uh, making two flap one is to be reflected slowly and gently on right side and then on left side this is the i shaped incision but sometime there are difficulty arises that when there is any obvious trauma or finding over the neck area where we are avoiding to in giving incision that is the i shaped incision by we are selecting the v shaped incision for opening the neck area v shaped incision incision is given from the angle of mandible brought up to suprastar notch and from this side again the incision is given from the in, below the angle of mandible and again brought toward the suprastar notch and fillet is reflected anteriorly to see any obvious pathology any finding any uh, bruising any uh, obvious lesion in soft tissue and hard tissue because in case of throttling in case of hanging in case of manual strangulation now usually the findings uh, are present on the neck area so we cannot missing the neck area in such cases we preserve the findings so we are selecting the v shaped incision 
but in routine cases we said we are starting to give the eye shaved incision starting from the chin and it will be taken up to the suprastor notch from this area straight the neck area and give incision of this area to see the uh, platysma stenocleidomastoid muscle soft tissue tracheal rings as well as to be see any possibility compression of the windpipe any vessels any injury any fracture of the hide bone or otherwise to be examined thoroughly and gently if there is obvious pathology on neck area uh, precaution must be exercised that is you can take an x ray of neck area first of all then you can open the neck because uh, we himself sometime can break the thyroid that is uh, uh, i say here the hide bone because it is very delicate structure so if there is an obvious pathology of manual strangulation better thing is that before opening the neck area x ray of neck should be done to see the fracture of the hide bone otherwise it will create a problem for you you see that then uh, the incision on the an, an neck area we can give the incision on the thoraco abdominal cavity now again you can give a straight eye shot position for just two type of position continue now one is eye shot which is to be continuity of uh, this is uh, incision from uh, neck area and this should be continue from thoracic cavity you see here this is eye shot incision now you know the the problem is that when you are starting cutting then thoracic cavity in a straight forward direction up to epigastric area you cannot cut the uh, straight forward because this is the sternum is a hard structure so you cannot cutting the uh, sternum by by your scalpel so best thing is that you can divert slightly on laterally on right side or left side to cut the costochondral junction the ribs which are united sternum you see in this condition in this case these are cutting of the ribs from costochondral junction because if we can broad the incision directly in straight forward position then we can the sternum is lies here so we cannot cutting the sternum which is a very hard structure so it is better thing is to slightly divert your incision either by either a single incision by cutting the costochondral junction then you reach up to the epigastric area this is the one method then you can reflect the uh, sternal piece on this area to see the open thoracic cavity but in some cases when the you need to uh, examine thoracic cavity very easily then the incision same incision is to be given from the right side uh, left side of the chest cavity that is to be from costochondral junction and flap of the sternum should be removed over and to visualize thoracic cavity when you have to cut the from the costochondral junction from this area or when you can cutting the costochondral junction from this area now the, the sternum is free so sternum should be removed forward and you can look at the thoracic cavity for any obvious pathology for any particular hemorrhages for any tardus spot for any congestion in the lungs trachea should be examined thoroughly as well as the heart pericardial cavity pleural cavity for collection of the blood collection of the air pneumothorax hemothorax or any possibility of the infection finding over the heart area in case of ami or in case of the sudden heart attack or otherwise it can be examined thoroughly one by one now this is the incision for neck and uh, chest cavity again i am now i am going to incision for abdomen but i, I would like to, to see other incisions for chest area next slide sir now this is the another uh, inc incision used for the chest area this is the y shaped incision given over the chest area uh, if you are not selecting the i shaped incision which i show previous slidely then y shaped incision should be selected down and uh, the incision is start from lateral end of the clavicle and you come across up to the a suprastor notch on this area and you can go again same side the lateral end of the clavicle on left side and come across to join here and then you can join the stellar incision to open the uh, abdominal cavity forward up to the umbilicus this is the y shaped incision now this again can be the, one is the i shaped for abdominal opening direct in i shaped incision from chin to umbilicus or pubic symphysis 
Number second, the for chest area, we select either I shaved, either Y shaved, or we sometimes we can say modified Y shaved incision. This is the modified Y shaped incision. And sometimes we are using the U shaped incision. Again, U shaped incision can be given from this area and used in the female to preserve the breast area and come across below the breast area and join at the epigastric area. But again, same from lateral end of the clavicle, come behind the breast and unite at this area. So there are three, three uh, uh, incision. One is the I shaped incision, Y shaped incision, modified Y shaped incision, and this is the U shaped incision used for the opening of the, uh, the, the chest cavity for the females. Now uh, you see for the incision for the chest as well as the abdomen collectively. Now, if you see here in this slide, this is the y modified Y-shaped incision. It was started from the later end of the clavicle and it was joined on the suprasternal notch and it was open. Now then straight forward incision is, this is totally looks to be a Y-shaped incision. You see from the chest area up to the abdominal pubic symphysis. Now after giving this Y-shaped incision, you, you are opening the chest cavity and then join the uh, I-shaped incision from the uh, epigastric area, take forward up to the pubic symphysis, but uh, preserving the umbilicus. Now we are not cutting the umbilicus, as you see in this case, now this is the I-shaped incision again for opening the abdominal cavity. We are not cutting the umbilicus the, due to certain reason. Number one is that we are not cutting on autopsy the umbilicus by giving the I-shaped incision to open the abdominal cavity, cutting all the anterior rectus muscle, anterior abdominal wall to open layer by layer and then to reach to open the uh, abdominal cavity. And we are preserving the umbilicus due to certain reason because this is a thick fibromuscular tissue. You cannot cutting the, the, the umbilicus by your scalper. It is quite difficult. If you move the scalper over the umbilicus, you cannot be cutting the umbilicus. So this is a reason for not cutting the umbilicus is number one is that it is a thick fibromuscular structure. Number two, this is the central point of the body. So when we are starting the re-suturing, when we suture the dead body, when we are after completing the autopsy, we are applying the suture to hand over the body, then it is a midpoint guiding us that this is the umbilicus so as to we can uh, apply the sutures on the body in a decent manner. So this is the midpoint of the body for reconstruction of the body in the same position by applying the stitch, stitches after completing the autopsy. That's why this guiding us. Number third is for cosmetic purposes. Usually we are not cutting the umbilicus. And number fourth reason is that this is the area where concealed injuries is present. Sometime externally the trauma is on the abdomen and nothing identify or abdominal area person dies away. The reason is this, is there any concealed area? So ablicus is a concealed area. Might he have got a trauma, bullet, or otherwise through the ablicus. So as to this, this is a concealed area. This is the area where concealed injury will be seen down, which leads sudden death. So that's why we are examining the by naked eye examination of the ablicus, but we are not cutting the ablicus. So you, when you reach, the I-shaped incision from this area and you bring the incision up to umbilicus, slightly encircle the umbilical area and again you rejoin below umbilicus and up, go up to the pubic surface to cut and you open the uh, abdominal cavity and you look at the uh, stomach and its content and then you see the large intestine, you examine the liver, you examine the kidneys lying on the backside area, you can examine the spleen, you can examine the uh, liver and gallbladder, as well as all the contents of abdomen should be seen. You see these pictures again, how the abdomen is to be opened down. Then we have to, this is, you see, this is the um, uh, uh, picture of stitches. When we are replacing the dead body, this is the very excellent stitches given in Y-shaped incision. This is the stitches given so as to one cannot be hesitate in crying. Now the, you see here, when we are heading over, it is mandatory that we can replace the dead body in the original position by applying the switches on the cutting area and you can hand it over to the dead body to the concerned uh, party or the, to the uh, police. Now there, then there, there we have incision for the limbs. Now usually we are not cutting the limbs, but in those cases where there's any obvious uh, lesion or trauma is over the limb area. 
uh, sometime there is big swelling over the thighs over the uh, uh, the lower part of the leg area low upper part of the thigh area then we are using to giving the incision to see any localization of the blood or internal injury on the limbs by giving a circular incision around the dead area to see any possibility of the gush of the blood to see any possibility of the injury on the limb. but usually we cannot use this type of incision over the limbs but in some cases occasionally we give now incision should be given under covered clothes now the area which are under clothes like upper part of thigh upper part of the leg if there is any injury then do select to see the uh, incision circular incision to look for any possibility of limbs otherwise we cannot use type this type of incision these are the other incision sometimes the custodial death the person you you have to listen that the the individual dies in the custodial death and in the death occurs in the police custody or police torture if you remember i talk many times that are the people are suddenly dies away if you remember in traumatology i talk about the kirsch syndrome i talk about, about the 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 impaction of the acid metabolites needing the prime that is the primary coronary tubules and are continued necrosis sudden death occurs so suppose in a case of custodial discharge this is usually happened that the magistrate brought the dead body under his custody to the mortuary to look for the cause of death because the, the person suddenly die away in the custody of the police because of torture or some time else so what are the types of incisions given in custodial death when this challenge is given to, to you then the, the in spite of all routine procedure incision which i talk about the all incision of all serous cavities and the pelvic cavities also open in case of the female in suspect in case of pregnancy to look for any uh, any obvious uh, uh, fetal skeleton in case of female because sometime pregnant female can dies away and claim is that the baby is also dies away so far opening of uh, skull opening of thoracic neck area opening of thoracic abdominal cavity then uh, pelvic cavity is open in case of female to look for the possibility of uh, the fetal skeleton in alleged cases so similarly i say here in custodial death in spite of all these routine incision we can give selecting two type areas three areas to give a incision to uh, to visualize any possibility of police torture is number one is you can give a x type of incision you take a, a, a scalper you give a x type of incision which i say cross type of incision over the palms because the people are more usually beated in a police torture over the palm area over the thigh area over the calf area and over the palms of and soles of the foot area so there are certain area where you can give a, an incision but in a cross type of incision that is a x type of incision if there is a beating of police and there is a localized collection of blood is available it will be easily coming on your cutting so to satisfy for in custodial death x type of incision should be given over the thighs area over the uh, palms and soles of the foot area over the uh, the the palms and the soles of foot area and the palms of the hand area to see any beating position of the police and any localized collection of the blood in that area to confirm that this person must be dies away by beating certain area so as to release of the fat in the fat acid metabolites may go to impacted in broken pieces of the blood vessel and leading sudden uh, ne necrosis of the tubules convoluted tubules of the kidney leading acute tubular necrosis which should be confirmed by the histopathological examination and in this case please be careful the down must to send the kidney for histopathology suppose you have to done autopsy and if you are not sending the kidney for the histopathology it is autopsy is improper because the custodial death which if it is occurred due to the tubular necrosis should be confirmed from the histopathological examination of the kidney so don't miss the sending of kidney for histopathology now another incision for assessment of the fetal age if you remember in the uh, objectives of the medical legal autopsy i talk last time and the last point of objective to assess the fetal age and the lividity of the child that is the viability of the child so sometimes the child, the fetal autopsy in case of fetal autopsy the fetus is brought to you for estimation of age 
of individual on autopsy table. And how will you demonstrate the assessment of the fetal age on autopsy by giving doing autopsy? So the incisions uh, is are given to see the fetal assessment age is that number one is that for assessment of the fetal skeletal age fetal age is that we are selecting the knee joint knee area give a transverse incision over the knee joint that is the over the uh, that is the knee area and refract the flat anteriorly up to the uh, lower end of the femur and lower portion up to the lower end of the tibia because at the age of ninth month of the pregnancy when the the baby is to be mature the the center of ossification and maturity ninth month of pregnancy appears at the lower end of the femur upper end of the tibia so the thing is that for this reason to see the fetal age and the presence of ossification center on lower end of the femur and upper end of the tibia we are giving a transverse incision over the knee joint and reflect should its skin should be reflect upward and downward and then you take an, a, 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 a sharp cutting instrument uh, and you start cutting the lower end of femur making a slice now you can start cutting the lower end of femur slightly by bone cutter slightly gently upward direction from the lower area the time comes if the ossification center is present in lower end of the femur just a age egg yolk brownish color ossification center will be identified at lower end of femur suggestive that the age of the fetus is 9 months of pregnancy similarly upper end of the tibia should be dissected down slowly and gently in the same manner that is in a dissecting manner in a slicing manner if the center of ossification appear over the upper end of the tibia the age will be the ninth month of the pregnancy so this is assessment of age number second incision is given at the foot area because the uh, center of ossification uh, at the fifth month and uh, sixth month is appears in the talus bone intrauterine age assessment uh, you see that i i have to teach you in last time that center of ossification in the age of the in six month of intrauterine life a fifth month in cuboidal bone six months in talus bone six to seven months in talus bone so for assessment of age if the baby is not mature then second incision for assessment of the fetal age should be selecting uh, incision over the foot area palm of the foot area from where now incision is given between the big toe and first finger of the toe and it will be given longitudinally up to the heel now you can reflecting the flap anterior the lateral side and and the and the right side the time will come then you see the talus bone and talus bone should be examined as well as the cuboidal bone should be examined to see the the presence of ossification center at the age of fifth you will assess the age of the this fetus on a autopsy table is not more than 5 to 6 month but if you want to see the uh, third incision over the sternum because the last piece of sternum intra uh, uterine appearance of ossif center at the 8th month of pregnancy appears the last uh, segment of the sternum so instead i incision is given slightly gently uh, over, the, over the sternum to see the internal findings and lower segment should be dissected down for possibility of uh, the, the ossif center likewise at the femur and tibia and cuboid and talus bone and we can assess the age of the the eighth month of the pregnancy so this is these are extra ordinary incision for custodial death for assessment of fetal assault these two questions sometimes can be asked in examination that suppose custodial death comes to you how will you demonstrate the autopsy what type of incision you are giving and this also question is very important in viva or in even in bcq they can give a question that how will you assess the age of fetus on the autopsy table similarly the bcq question can coming from the uh, uh, for the cutting of the umbilicus why we are not cutting on the umbilicus in the autopsy so these are the simple questions they are to be asked in the examination for the dissection on in the custodial death as well as in the, the assessment of the fetal age area uh, i am stopping over time is over is there any question please ask question sir Hello. Hello, sir. Abhi abhi kaha ke custodial death mein like uh, we give an X-shaped incisions over the palms. Sir, apne uske significance badai ki kindly repeat that. Thoda so, case bolein beta. 
सर आपने अभी कहा था कि जब कस्टिडियल डेथ होंगी कस्टिडियल डेथ की केसेस होंगे तो वहाँ पे पाम्स पे एग शिप इंसेशन देते हैं लाइक फॉर द पोस्टमार्टम सर आपने उस इंसेशन की सिग्निफिकेंस क्या बताई है सेकंड सेकंड क्या बताया था सर आपने कहा था कि पाम्स में हम एग शिप इंसिडेंस लाइक इंसेशन देते हैं तो सर कलेक्शन if it is beat by the police so when you are started giving the ex incision it is already beaten by police then gush of the blood when you give incision x type incision on this area easily gush of the blood coming from that area suggestive that this person is actually 100% is beaten by the police another question hello please question आवाज आ रही है बेटा आवाज नहीं आ रही है सर कस्टोडियल डेथ में आपने कितनी से रिलेटेड भी कुछ बताया था वो बता दें बेटा दोबारा पूछे सर कस्टोडियल डेथ में आपने कितनी से रिलेटेड भी कुछ बताया था वो रिपीट कर दें कस्टोडियल डेथ में पीपल्स आर डाइज अवे सडनली इन द कस्टडी ऑफ पुलिस ओके now if you remember that last time i told you that when ever any person is beaten on a, a, such a area like where there is more subcutaneous tissue now due from subcutaneous tissue due to beating now there is a, a immobilization of the fat fat globules and acid metabolites from such area can be ghost impacted in broken blood vessel because when bruises produced and subcutaneous tissue is to be break down now bruise is produced due to accumulation of blood because of the uh, rupture of the vessel under the surface of skin so the acid metabolites which are released from the tissues that is from the subcutaneous tissue they are impacted due to negative pressure in the vessels they are immediately go through circulation and impacted in the proximal convoluted tubules in the kidney in the renal system and cause suddenly acute tubular necrosis and this is the reason that a person is beaten at night and dies away at the day or at a time this is sudden tubular necrosis immediately cause sudden death of individual this is the reason we are not missing the kidney sending for histopathology for any poss possibility of looking for tubular necrosis are you understanding तक जाते हैं इसको वाई शिफ्ट कहते हैं ठीक है नाउ व्हेन एवर इज एनी आबिस पैथोलॉजी ऑन द चेस्ट एरिया देन वी आर नॉट गिविंग स्टेट आई इंसिशन बट वी आर सेलेक्टिंग मॉडिफाइड वाई शेप्ड इंसिशन स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम द लेटरल एंड ऑफ द क्लेविकल आपने देखा होगा पहली प्रीवियस स्लाइड्स के अंदर द लेटरल एंड ऑफ द क्लेविकल से मैंने इंसिशन दिखाया था आप लोगों को कोई कोई नाउ दिस इंसिशन इज फ्रॉम लेटरल एंड ऑफ द क्लेविकल एंड इट शुड बी जॉइंट एट द एपिगेस्ट्रिक एरिया एपिगेस्ट्रिक एरिया कोई कोई ना पूछ ए यो वो तो अब तो यार अब तो यार लुक हियर दिस इज द वाई शेप्ड इंसिशन मॉडिफाइड रिचर इट वाज स्टार्टेड फ्रॉम दिस एरिया जॉइन अप टू दिस एरिया ऑन बोथ साइड एंड इट इज यूनाइटेड ऑन दिस एरिया एंड देन इट इज टू बी टेकन एन आई शेप्ड इंसिशन फॉरवर्ड अप टू दिस दिस शेप इज कॉल्ड इज द मॉडिफाइड वाई शेप्ड इंसिशन यूजुअली वाई शेप्ड इंसिशन कैन स्टार्ट फ्रॉम द नेक एरिया बट दिस इज द स्टार्ट फ्रॉम वाई शेप्ड इंसिशन दिस लुक्स टू बी वाई शेप्ड इंसिशन So this is called as the modified vice shape incision another question please sir ji beta 
सर हिस्टोपैथोलॉजिकल एग्जामिनेशन डीकम्पोज बॉडी के लिए जो आपने बताई थी वो दोबारा से बता दें तो देखिए मैं आपको बता रहा हूं ब्रेन हम खोलते हैं ना तभी कोई डीकम्पोज बॉडी आती है व्हेन एवर डीकम्पोज बॉडी इज रिसीव्ड बॉडी इंटैक्ट तो नहीं है डीकम्पोज है तो ऑल द टिश्यूज आर ऑटोलाइज्ड नाउ हिस्टोपैथोलॉजिकल एग्जामिनेशन रिवील्स नथिंग टू असर्टेन द कॉज ऑफ डेथ बिकॉज़ द टिश स्ट्रक्चरल डिजाइन ऑफ द टिश्यूज डिस्ट्रॉयड ड्यू टू ऑटोलाइसिस डीकम्पोजिशन सो व्हेन ब्रेन इज Autolyzed when liver is autolyzed when stomach is autolyzed, its histopathology doesn't help us any of this finding after autolysis. But when you can send any intact organ, recent tissue from the body when body dies away early and recently you are intact organ, you can send then histopathology can help us. But after the decomposition took place, then all the structural design are decomposed. So no any obvious pathology will be observed due to the decomposition or autolysis auto means self and lysis means destruction destruction of the tissue by self mechanism so us conditions ke andar hame histopathology kuch madad nahi kar sakti okay and, sir thank you sir aur sir false cerebri false cerebri ko kaise cut karte hain wo bhi bata dein cerebri ko beta dekh lena aapko jab when you have completed the cutting of the dura then you can go in straight forward in a vertical direction you insert the scissor between two hemisphere and you start cutting the fox cerebri in between to separate separate the both cerebral hemisphere left cerebral hemisphere and right cerebral hemisphere then you insert your left hand in anterior cranial fossa slightly raise the pituitary stalk because pituitary stalk lies in middle cranial fossa so you insert start approach should be from anterior cranial fossa and your left goes up to the middle cranial fossa slightly raise the uh, pituitary stalk and you take scissor cutting the pituitary stalk by your right hand by scissor and remove the brain from cranial cavity okay beta okay sir thank you सर आपने जो फीटल की एज में बताया था कि स्टर्नम को स्टर्नम का जो है ना वो इंसिशन देते हैं सर वो कौन से एज का बताते हैं कि वो कितने एज का फीटस है एसेसमेंट करने के लिए मैंने तीन चीजें बताई एक चीज मैंने बताई कि हम तो या तो लोअर एंड ऑफ फीमर पे या अपर एंड ऑफ ट्रिबिया पे देखते हैं तो ट्रांसफर इंसिशन नी जॉइंट पे मैंने बताया ठीक है दूसरा इंसिशन मैंने बताया क्यूबाइड एंड टेलस बोन का फुट पे ट्रांसफर इंसिशन फ्रॉम फर्स्ट एंड सेकंड टू अब तो हील एंड रिफ्लेक्ट करके अब वो आता है वो वो नाइन्थ मंथ में आता है इस फीवर लोअर एंड ऑफ द फीवर एंड अपर एंड ऑफ द टिब्या में और जो इसके बहुत देर का बोला जो जो क्यूबाइड एंड टेलस में आता है वो फाइव और सिक्स मंथ इंट्रा यूट्राइन एज में आता है और स्टर्न में जो जो हमने बताया वो आसफिलियन सेंटर अपीयर होता है एट्थ मंथ ऑफ प्रेगनेंसी में तो हम आई शेप इंसिशन देके स्टर्न का थर्ड पीस जो होता है उसमें प्राइमरी असिबिशन सेंटर अपीयर से इंट्रा यूट्राइनली एट द एज ऑफ एट्थ मंथ ऑफ द इंट्रा यूट्राइन लाइफ सो उसमें एट्थ मंथ की अगर हमें करनी होती है तो हम इस टर्म को सेलेक्ट करते हैं यस सर थैंक यू हेलो सर 